It's the new millennium, and id Software is hard at work on Doom 3. The first year of Doom, after I had laid down the very basic technology, I was always saying that there's kind of like a, a tripod of features and technology that's going to make Doom what it is. There's the unified lighting and shadowing. There's the more complex animation and scripting, which will show off that lighting and shadowing on there. And then there's the GUI surfaces, which add the extra level of interactivity to the game. And all of those really proved out correct. The new engine, you know, for Doom 3 is just, it's really revolutionary in the fact that it gives us the power to really create just about eating that we can imagine. Okay, there's a few things we need to take care of first. And id pieces together the game's new storyline with the help of science fiction writer Matthew Costello. We actually contracted a professional science fiction writer to help us with the story. That was a first for id. He left you no choice, true. But this is the last time. After we laid the basic story foundation down, we storyboarded all the action. That also was the first for id. We knew we wanted to take the the Doom story, the original Doom story, and the Doom environment, and sort of bring that into uh, the future. Amazing things will happen here soon. You just wait. The story in Doom uh, takes place as if the first two never happened. So it's, it's very important that fans realize that this is not Doom 3, you know, after Doom 2 Hell on Earth. This is Doom 3, whereas Doom and Doom 2 never happened. And so we knew we had those elements to, to work with, like uh, the uh, UAC, a uh, research facility, uh, Martian landscape. The player is back on Mars, and uh, the UAC is conducting some super-secret teleportation technology. UAC scientists have made discoveries that will forever change human existence. Then something went terribly wrong. Through some miscalculations and some arrogance, the, uh, the UAC opens a portal to hell. When we started um, thinking about what direction to go with that, uh, we looked at different movies that we felt like that would uh, portray those demonic elements, monster elements, the Martian landscape, uh, the weapons that we felt we'd have, things like that. We've really kind of taken a new approach on the old story. We've answered some questions like, where did the UAC come up with the technology? You know, what's the demon's motivation? I mean, we've, we've really expanded all of those aspects and made a really, you know, uh, engrossing story. And some old enemies make a return, along with a few new surprises. With the ultra-realistic looking you know, textures and monsters, we can bring those original demons that people love so much from, from Doom back, you know, with just larger-than-life quality. There's quite a few little elements that popped up here and there uh, in, uh, in Doom 3. There's a number of, of textures from uh, little tech textures or... Uh, some evil wall textures or satanic symbols and things like that. The original Doom demons are very classic in, in themselves. We knew that we had to bring the great ones back, like the Cyber Demon and the, and, uh, and the Pinky Demon. We decided which ones we wanted to bring back, and then Ken Scott took those and started to draw the newer, updated versions in concept art. The Imp character people will remember from the original Doom, the uh, Caco Demon, which is that big... Well, it's like a big strawberry in the original Doom. He's quite a bit more scary in Doom 3. But besides bringing back the, some of the original classics, we actually came up with some new ones and some brand new fresh demons that, uh, that no one's ever seen before. But gamers won't be facing these demons empty-handed. All of the weapons from the original Doom are in Doom 3, and uh, we've added a few new ones. It's a good feeling to bring up that Doom shotgun, bust open a door, and go into a room with demons. So I think fans of the original will, will definitely appreciate that. In 2001, Doom is revealed to the public for the first time at Macworld in Tokyo. But the game makes an even bigger splash when id Software takes it to E3 in 2002. The year that Doom 3 came out, people couldn't sit still. You would come out, you would tell people about what you had seen, how real it looked, how it was maybe Shrek quality animation and graphics. And they'd look at you blank faced because there was no way it could be real. We had a 15 minute in-game kind of demo play. And we had seats and it was real dark and uh, uh, it really kind of made the fans realize 
that uh, the game's scary, that, that the game has movie quality, that, you know, it's over-the-top action. Uh, it really it really helped kind of deliver the message that, you know, what, what Doom, you know, was. Everybody knew what Doom, the original Doom was, but they, they never knew what direction that we were taking Doom 3. And this gave us the opportunity to show that direction. When it went out there and it just had this amazing reception on there, you know, they're just sitting there sometimes with their mouth open, just going, this is incredible. People didn't believe it was real. The E3 judges, they had to come up to us and say, okay, would you like to go try it? Or would you like to see us play it so we can prove to you that this is not a fake, this is a real thing? We received great feedback. We won five awards that year at, at E3. It was, uh, it was a fantastic E3 for us. But just as id Software returns from a triumphant E3 showing, the unthinkable happens. 